Hey everyone, Anthony Fantano here, Internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a, a revisit to an older album that I gave a take on years ago. We're traveling with the Wayback Machine to the far off time of 2014. A young Fayetteville rapper, J. Cole, is coming up in the game, about to drop uh, one of his most beloved albums of all time, 2014 Forest Hills Drive. A bald, sexy music reviewer who is really beginning to get his name out there uh, is going to review the album on his YouTube channel and ended up giving this record a 6 out of 10. And uh, th there was uh, much displeasure over that. So much so that this take has often been cited as one of my worst reviews, uh, one of my biggest instances of lowballing an album. And I've decided here to go back back to the album, uh, not just because it is coming up on a decade since I reviewed it originally, but also obviously Jake Cole is at a very different time in his career. I think he is now these days putting out some of his best work to date, and I know that sometimes I do have a tendency to uh, warm up toward an artist's older catalog when I'm enjoying their more recent stuff. Plus on top of it, I think Cole's progression as well as classic stuff is worthy of re analysis, especially given uh, the recent Kendrick Lamar beef thing going on, where Cole is obviously very happy uh, to be working uh, with some of the biggest artists in the game, like Drake, uh, be himself one of the biggest artists in the game, which he wasn't as he was kind of coming out with that record. He would grow to be so over the years. And, you know, maybe there's just something to J. Cole's earlier stuff that uh, I wasn't crazy about that uh, maybe went over my head. Maybe I wasn't fully appreciating, which is a feeling I was very much having as I kicked this album off because I kind of forgot how great 2014 Forest Hills Drive starts off. It's It's got a strong first leg. On January 28th, I may not be crazy about the production on this track. It's not the hardest beat on the record, that much is for sure, but uh, Cole's rapping and writing are top notch. And I love how clear he is with his messaging on it in terms of unity, in terms of peace, in terms of uh, togetherness, but also uh, pointing out and sussing out some of the systematic obstacles and media portrayals that are working against the well-being of the black community. Repeating refrains of don't let them taint your soul. Uh, obviously, the track is a very kind of slow, heady, chill vibe, and I think is a good tone setter for the record and pretty much gives you an idea of what you're going to be in for on this album. Following this on Wet Dreams, which is a track that uh, maybe at first I was a little on the fence on because there are some elements that uh, to me just feel a little bit kind of awkward. However, I do love the soul chops on the beat and overall. Uh, narratively, it is a, a cool, very very personal stroll down memory lane. On this one, as I'm sure many of you remember, Cole is essentially telling uh, the story of how he lost his virginity, which was something that at the time when he released this track, he very much got roasted for by a lot of different artists and rap fans. A wet Dreams by J. Cole and is spelled with a Z at the end. Who saw it as kind of whack and weird and maybe just you know, TMI. But again, I like the instrumental and the way it kind of comes together with Cole's delivery and flow on this track. It rings as just very early Kanye. And listening back to it, there's something about the song that I think... I appreciate now that comes across as very kind of self-aware, uh, self-facing in a way where, you know, he kind, of, he kind of knows how he's portraying himself. And I do think there is a vulnerability about his storytelling on this song that I think is really cool, the way he's kind of like openly acknowledging bullshitting her. And then obviously we reach a point in the story where we come to learn that, you know, both him and her are having their first time at this time. But yeah, overall, I think it's a very smart catchy, interesting track, uh, detailing a moment that for most people is probably like, you know, not so smooth, isn't maybe as exciting or as glamorous as maybe we uh, want it to be. And we kind of build it up into something much bigger than it needs to be in our heads. Following this, we have 03 Adolescence, which is uh, not so much a song as it is a meditation of sorts about survival, guilt, and a host of other things. J. Cole essentially on this track feeling very lucky 
and appreciative that his mom, uh, his talents, and the opportunities he is being given are preventing him from essentially kind of slipping through the cracks into a life of drug dealing and who knows what else. He also kind of relays the message that there's more to life than material things and being popular and having the fly of shoes, which I can't disagree. I think there are some similar themes that come up on the following A Tale of Two Cities, where Cole is very much rapping about the violent lifestyle that uh, he could be leading, that friends of his could be uh, the victim of, or that other people are leading due to kind of falling through those aforementioned cracks I was discussing on the previous track. He portrays being trapped in the city in this way uh, as if it were a nightmare. It's very poetic. Though I will say, again, the overall point that Cole is making here feels very redundant in light of the previous track. And strangely, even though he's rapping about a very similar phenomenon, he's not hitting you with as strong a conclusion. It's not a bad listen, though. Then following this with Fire Squad, this is a track that for sure I enjoyed when the album first came out. Obviously a banger with a big boom bap beat and Cole giving what is maybe his most aggressive and impassioned rap performance on this track. The issue, though, is that I don't think this song has aged the best when it comes to the overall track list here. While, yeah, I do think this performance stands out in the context of this album when it comes to lyricism, when it comes to flow and overall technical ability, I think Cole has very much leapfrogged his performance on this track again and again and again with numerous songs since and, and features. If there's anything that really kind of keeps me messing with this track, it's that uh, in the final moments of it, Cole's writing about how the music industry co-opts and exploits black art that obviously still very much stands. And I think Cole also makes a very good point about the whole fighting over who's the king of hip hop thing and how it's very much pointless and just a futile effort. And I think this rings uh, true as well in terms of like Cole sticking to this idea uh, when he was talking about how he and Drizzy and Kendrick are so successful on first person shooter. Like he obviously genuinely thinks it's cool that everybody is like uh, succeeding in their own way and that being at the top of the game in rap music doesn't mean that you have to be at each other's throats. But uh, obviously Kendrick doesn't feel the same way. It's after this point, though, that I think the record really begins to go downhill. We have San Trope, which um, I don't know. This one's a snoozer in just about every way that it can be. From the flow to the lazy beat to Cole's sung vocals, I really get nothing from it. I think Cole tries to pick things back up with Get Off My Dick following this, but for an explosive moment, I think it comes across a little awkward, especially since lyrically, I don't think he knows quite where to aim. Like, it's not as visceral as it's trying to be, and then in the second leg, we just all of a sudden get this verse about love with Cole commenting about how uh, other rappers and artists are unwilling to talk about or address love. I mean, while sure, Drake may not literally be rapping about uh, blowing bubbles in the bathtub type shit, he was definitely singing and rapping about love in 2014, as were uh, other artists who were on the come up too. I guess maybe I have to remember uh, that we were kind of still coming off the 2010s at this point, the bling era. And while there was a lot of mainstream stuff to come out of that era that was quite shallow, I don't know if I quite agree with the portrayal of the time that Cole is making here, or that he's even uniquely addressing love as a topic on this track. Of course, on No Role Models, uh, Cole is going off about love even more, and there are some very iconic lines that uh, have aged in a very <laughs> weird way, with him talking about wanting that Jada and Will love, which, you know, we, we've since learned, no, no, we do not. We, we do, do not, not want that. that. There's some other head scratcher moments that I, I'm not really crazy about in retrospect, like the George Bush drop, and Cole talking about how ill his team is and that Martin Luther King would have been on Dreamville. Yeah, it, it sort of serves as a reminder that Cole used to really throw out a lot of lines that were questionable. And I think it's it's great that he's gotten just a lot more consistent as of as of late. The song Hello, in my opinion, is handily the weakest track here. I don't recall fully if that was my least favorite when I originally reviewed uh, the album, but listening to the record now, it just kind of sounds like he's making the theme song for a television drama and I'm just not really getting anything out of it. I think apparently is also a show of how great Cole has gotten over the years when it comes to bringing up points, feelings, ideas, and then having some kind of like topical or narrative follow through 
past that point. Because on this one, while I do understand he is being very vulnerable and he's, you know, revealing the fact that maybe he hasn't been like the best son, has been a little selfish or kind of crappy to his mom, he doesn't from there come to any kind of conclusion in terms of like his behavior or what he's going to do. He instead just kind of shifts off into another verse where he goes on about getting head and being horny. I kind of forgot how all over the place Cole's older stuff could sound sometimes. And tying things up toward the end of the record, Love Yours is another confusing moment for me because while the point, the message of the song is clear in terms of like, hey, love the life you have. There's no such thing as a life that's better than yours. I mean, I guess that's a nice thought, but one, Cole was just kind of making the opposite point earlier on numerous bars where he came across very appreciative and thankful that uh, his life went the way that it did and that there were other pathways he could have chosen or could have been uh, chosen for him and he didn't go in that direction. So obviously he has a personal preference in terms of how his life has panned out. And then from there, kind of messaging to the audience this idea of like, hey, you know what? This whole being rich and successful thing, like being a famous rapper or whatever, it's it's not all it's cracked up to be. Don't worry about it. Yeah, I'm not so much sure that is true. I'm not saying that like, you know, uh, being a famous music artist would be the ideal life for everyone. And also, you know, Cole does make a fair point in terms of uh, money not being able to buy happiness. But certainly there are worse things that tend to come along with poverty. It's not just about not being happy. And Cole insisting in some way that a uh, being broke is better or somehow more preferable. Uh, I don't know. It just kind of comes across as a little tone deaf. And then, of course, we have the uh, very well-known note to self closer, which is obviously the big, super lengthy finish to the album where Cole's doing a lot of different shout outs and everything, which is cute, obviously, but uh, doesn't quite hit with the impact that it did originally 10 years later. And it's with that that I got to say, honestly, I'm, I'm still not really that crazy about this album. I think it has its highlights. I think it has its moments. There are certainly some standout tracks that I was a little hard on uh, when I originally heard it. There are other songs that I think haven't quite aged all that well. And frankly, when it comes to writing, when it comes to spitting, when it comes to having more of a cohesive idea central to an entire song, I think Cole has been um, just a lot more on the ball as of late than he was at this time. Though I can still very much appreciate where he was coming from on this album in retrospect and uh, how it definitely laid the groundwork for what he would accomplish later in his career. But yeah, those are essentially my thoughts on this album. Let me know 10 years down the line, how is this record aged for you? Are you loving it any more or less than you did when you first heard it? Anything you have to say, I would appreciate to hear. Over here next to my head is another video that you can check out. Hit that up or a link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantastic. Tano, J. Cole, Forest Hills Drive, forever.